an incredible paper came out this week in the journal Nature, outlining evidence for a Mesolithic presence on the Mediterranean archipelago of Malta. Why is this big news? Well, because up until now, the earliest evidence for human occupation of the islands dated back to 7,400 years ago, when Neolithic farmers made their way to Malta from nearby Sicily. It was a later Neolithic group of people, probably also from Sicily, that built the megalithic ritual monuments usually referred to as temples, several of which are still in pretty good condition today. This new evidence not only pushes back the date of human activity on the islands to 1,000 years earlier, but since sea levels in the central Mediterranean were similar at that time as they are today, it means that these Mesolithic people had to have got to Malta via boat. Quoting from the paper, our discoveries document the longest yet known hunter-gatherer sea crossings in the Mediterranean, raising the possibility of unknown precocious connections across the wider region. Let's get into it. This is not the first time someone has suggested that human activity begun on Malta at an earlier date. In the past, evidence was presented for Neanderthals having reached the islands via a land bridge that connected Malta to Sicily when the sea levels were much lower during the Paleolithic. This was based on teeth found in the Ardalum cave. It was also suggested that paintings in a cave called Ar Hassan could date back to the Paleolithic. However, in both of these cases, subsequent work rejected these claims. I will get into that later in the video. But let's start with some context on prehistory in Malta, then I will talk about the Mesolithic site where all of this new evidence has been uncovered, and then I'll get into the controversial stuff. Malta is a remote group of islands in the Mediterranean, 100 kilometers south of Sicily and around 300 kilometers east of Tunisia. During the last glacial maximum of the Ice Age, the sea level in the Mediterranean was a lot lower, and this meant that the two largest islands of the archipelago, Malta and Gozo, had a larger landmass, were joined together, and were connected to Sicily via a land bridge. However, around 13,000 years ago, this land bridge was submerged, and over the next few thousand years, the Maltese islands achieved their current size and roughly speaking, their current shorelines. They currently cover just 316 square kilometers. Previous research in the Mediterranean seemed to suggest that hunter-gatherers mostly traveled to islands that were large and easy to reach. Malta, being small and remote, was not thought to have been settled until the Neolithic. The earliest Pottery found in Malta is similar in style to Stentinello ware from Sicily, so it was hypothesized that these Neolithic farmers had traveled from there. Since the Neolithic started in the southern part of the Italian peninsula and Sicily between 7,900 and 7,500 years ago, it made chronological sense that the earliest date range for human farming activity in Malta dated to between 7,400 and 7,100 years ago. At a site called Scorba, the stone foundations for hut structures have been excavated, along with various evidence for agriculture and animal husbandry, and some ritual finds. Close by, a later group of Neolithic people built what is now referred to as the Scorba Temples. The team behind the Fraxus project, carried out in Malta between 2013 and 2018, re-excavated some Neolithic sites and did a dating campaign as part of this. In the monograph Temple Places, they published this summary of the newly refined chronology for human habitation on the islands. As you can see, there was likely a hiatus of almost 1,000 years between the first settlers and the temple builders. A few of the best preserved still extant temples are UNESCO World Heritage Sites and are some of the most intriguing megalithic monuments in the world.
The culture that built them likely originated in Sicily and did get certain materials such as obsidian from other islands in the Mediterranean. But its overall isolation led to it evolving in an entirely unique way. A joint excavation was carried out between the Max Planck Institute of Geoanthropology and the University of Malta at the cave site known as Latnia near the village of Melija. It's situated in a large doline near the coast and is also close to several fresh water sources. Between 2021 and 2023, these digs revealed that groups of hunter-gatherers had inhabited the cave for around 1,000 years and had sustained themselves with a combination of wild flora and fauna, as well as fish and marine mammals. A five by five meter trench was excavated under an overhang on the northwestern edge of the Doline. The trench was then divided into a grid of one square meter squares and artifacts larger than two centimeters were recorded. Six phases were identified. The base, phase six, is made up of natural cave sediment on top of sloping boulders. Above this, phases five, through three are referred to as the Mesolithic horizon, since this is where evidence for anthropogenic activity was found. The earliest Mesolithic deposit is phase five and is made up of path features, gray, ash-rich sediment, animal bones, and stone tools. Phytoliths, which are essentially fossilized plant minerals, were found in the ash samples and were likely put there intentionally as fuel or for some other purpose related to the combustion features. Phase 4 contains fauna and artifacts and in phase 3 a sub-circular pit was found containing marine shells, ashes and stone tools. Phases 4 and 3 both contain material from the collapse of the cave wall and the Mesolithic horizon is then sealed off by further material related to cave wall collapses. Phases 2 and 1 contain artefacts from later prehistoric, historic and modern periods. 32 dates from charcoal show that the site was first occupied 8,500 years ago and that the Mesolithic period seems to have ended with the arrival of Neolithic farmers 1,000 years later. Marine shells from the Mesolithic horizon layers were also dated and gave a range of between 8,600 and 7,500 years ago, so supported the chronology identified from testing the charcoal. 64 stone tools were found in total, and except for one made from chert, they were all made from local limestone. Some of these had been sourced from beach pebbles and others from outcrops. Later Neolithic assemblages are made from chert, some of which had been imported as well as imported obsidian. The Mesolithic assemblage is made up of simple flakes with a limited amount of cores, blades and bladelets. In this, it's quite different to Sicily and other nearby areas which had more complex technologies at that time. The Latnia lithic material is closer in character to that found in Sardinia. This could be the result of using poor quality limestone or because the population was small. Faunal remains found on the site are all wild and mostly come from red deer, birds and marine gastropods. A small number of reptiles, fish, crabs, sea urchins and seals were also found. Much of the faunal assemblage had been burned and charred, which is evidence for anthropogenic activity. I've mentioned in previous videos on Malta that during the Neolithic there's little evidence that people exploited marine resources for food. However, as can be seen from this research into the Mesolithic, the groups that inhabited the Latnia cave did use marine resources and this was a common subsistence behaviour at other Mediterranean sites at that time as well. Archaeobotanical analyses found evidence for plants that still grow wild on the islands today. Isotopic analyses of deer and rodent teeth found a mixture of grassland, scrubland and woodland. The post-excavation research into the material excavated from the site is still ongoing and the cave has been sealed to protect it as well.
it's likely that these Mesolithic people reached Malta via dugout canoes. The exact distance between Sicily and Malta is 85 kilometers. However, sea surface currents and prevailing winds, as well as navigation techniques reliant on landmarks and stars, could well have meant a crossing of 100 kilometers. Some years ago, experimental archaeology in Italy was carried out to replicate a dugout canoe excavated from the submerged settlement of La Marmotta in Lake Bracciano, north of Rome. Voyages on this replica showed that crossings of 50 kilometers could be made at a speed of just over two knots or four kilometers per hour. Such a journey from Sicily to Malta would have taken up all daylight hours plus eight hours of darkness. In summer, a southeasterly current would have made this journey even longer. In fact, in more recent times, sailboats preferred to leave Sicily from the Gulf of Gela rather than the closest point to Malta in order to reduce the effects of this drift. So what we are looking at is evidence for long distance open water journeys in the Mediterranean Mesolithic, something not documented for that time period and location before. Of course, we can only surmise as to why these Mesolithic people made such a dangerous crossing. The authors of the paper suggest that they may have been driven by the availability of resources or by social factors, such as the transition to the Neolithic in the Mediterranean. Interestingly, similarities have been noticed before between Mesolithic and Epipaleolithic technologies on both the African and European sides of the Mediterranean. This new evidence, as well as these previous observations, suggest that the Mesolithic Mediterranean was more interconnected than previously thought. So back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. I thought it would be interesting to look at the previous research that was done on the possibility of Neanderthals having been in Malta. It ended up becoming a bit of a conspiracy cover-up type story, although as I've pointed out before, there's absolutely no reason why such a thing would be covered up. Hunter-gatherers did live in Sicily, and at that time Sicily was joined to Malta by a land bridge. That land bridge is how various fauna made its way to Malta. The various inundations of it are what led to periods of isolation that caused fauna to adapt to their unique environment. There's been a lot of research on the various faunal assemblages in Malta dating to tens of thousands of years ago. So it is perfectly plausible that earlier humans may have got to Malta. I haven't heard any local scholars say the idea in itself is crazy. However, there's simply no evidence for it. But let's talk about the famous case of the Neanderthal Molas. In 1924, Sir Arthur Keith and Mr George Sinclair authored a paper in the Journal of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland entitled Neanderthal Man in Malta. This was not the first published article on the subject, but it was meant to cast further light on it. They discussed reports emerging from the excavations of the Ardalum cave, including one by Dr Giuseppe Despot, who, with Carmelo Rizzo, had uncovered some unusual teeth. Ardalum cave is an amazing site that's open to the public and shows a cross-section of the different strata that have been excavated there. The earliest layer with organic remains dates to between 180 and 130,000 years ago and is known as the hippopotamus or Brescia layer. Above this sits the pebble layer, which is empty of organic remains, and then above this sits a layer containing the fossilised bones of deer, wolves and bears, amongst other fauna, and which dates to between 18 and 10,000 years ago. The top layer is the cultural layer, which has early Neolithic pottery and bones from domesticated animals. That's it in a nutshell. It's a bit more complicated than that, but that is enough to provide the context needed for the Neanderthal discussion. One of the photographs featured in the 1924 article showed eight human teeth recovered from the cave. Six of these were similar to those found in modern humans, but two were unusual. These molars showed evidence of torodontism, a term coined by Keith, which refers to a tooth where the roots are not separate structures, but form one block. 
At that time, since these resembled Neanderthal teeth, it was suggested that Neanderthals had been present in Malta. However, it was also noted that there were no other signs of Paleolithic occupation in the cave or anywhere else on the islands for that matter. In 1924, examples of torodontism were known in modern humans, but these looked a bit different. In 1936, a third torodont molar was found in the Ardalum cave. But torodontism alone wasn't the only reason why the experts of the day suggested Neanderthals had lived in Malta. It was also because the molars were excavated from the deer layer, which dates back to between 10,000 and 18,000 years. That's still not old enough for Neanderthals, but it certainly means an earlier human presence than that found in the cultural layer. However, excavations at that time were not as careful as they are today, so it was thought that a mistake had led to the teeth ending up in the deer layer. So in the 1950s, in an attempt to settle this argument once and for all, Dr. Kenneth Oakley, the expert who had proven that the Piltdown Man was a hoax, carried out nitrogen tests on the molars which showed they were, in actual fact, contemporary with the deer. Alas, later nitrogen tests that he carried out contradicted these early results and placed the molars in the Neolithic. In 1962, a Maltese dentist called Dr. Mandrum wrote a paper for the British Dental Journal detailing two molars he had extracted over the years, which had advanced torodontism. This added further weight to the argument that it is sometimes seen in modern humans. In 1967, uranium oxide tests appeared to prove the more ancient date. Two Maltese medical doctors joined the debate and in their 1997 book Dossier Malta, Anton and Simon Mifsud put forward the argument that the nitrogen tests had been invalid. They also argued about exactly which of the three torodont molars had been subjected to which tests. In 2016, they consulted with experts in geometric morphometrics, where additional features of the teeth, such as the crowns, could be looked at in more detail. Using this method, one of the molars was seen as a match for a Neanderthal tooth. The Mifsuds argued for a ADNA analysis to be done on the teeth, but this didn't take place. One of the main arguments against their hypothesis is that there's no supporting evidence for a Paleolithic presence on Malta. The authors countered this by pointing out that some Paleolithic tools were found in the past, but these were not well documented and didn't survive. Nevertheless, the consensus remains. Over the years, it's also been argued that Paleolithic paintings can be found on the walls of the Ar Hassan cave near the village of Berzebuja. In 2023, a team reanalyzed the paintings there using a range of non-invasive methods and found that practically all of the panels were graffiti produced in the last century. Only one panel could potentially be older, but it was not possible for the team to confirm this with any degree of certainty since it had been subject to vandalism and other destructive processes. That's it. Let me know what you think about this story in the comments. Thank you to my patrons and channel members and I'll see you next time.